today I'm going to show you how I load my quilts onto my frame. Um, I had a request for this and I'm doing this sample quilt um, for a video and I thought okay let me go ahead and show how I do this. So it's not a full quilt. This is kind of a, a more narrow piece here but I've got the backing on. This is um, the, the right side of the fabric is facing down. Okay and I do go to the back of my frame when I load my quilts. I know a lot of you don't um, and the, either way is fine but for the way that I do it and I use pins I don't um, use the red snappers. I've, I've talked to you about that before. I don't have anything against them. I just, I like the pins. Um, so here's the backing um, draped over the back. So that means I have the leader rolled um, under the dead bar here and then back onto the top of the back here. So we're gonna walk to the back of the machine now. Here we go. <clears throat> so as you can see this is the quilt back and I have it kind of sort of lined up with this now when I when I turn this up I have marked my leaders at five inch increments and um, I also you, you might notice there's some fusible tape on here that's because uh, I have a certain process for straightening leaders I'll show you that sometime but these leaders have been straightened um, at some point in their life. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is pin right along uh, the edge here, about a quarter inch from the edge um, at every five inches. Okay, so um, I'm, I'm hand holding my camera right now, so I'm gonna do that and then I'll, I'll come right back because I can't do it all without hands. <laughs> okay, be right back. Okay, so now I have the backing pinned to the back bar, okay? And then that, I just let it drop down. Okay, so from the front, you can see that I, I've dropped it down. I just let it hang there. And I've got the, um, the backing pretty much, I tried to put it on fairly square, but we'll see what happens as I roll it. So what I'm going to do now is start rolling from the back. Okay, so I'm just turning by hand. And as I'm rolling, the quilt is advancing and I'm watching um, to be sure that it's advancing evenly. So I'm gonna check the edge here uh, to see that it's rolling on straight. Okay, so rolling. And if I see any big wrinkles I'll get them out but okay I'm rolling and smoothing this isn't too there you go now um, the fabric has dropped down uh, which is fine that's when I start pinning from the front this is the Innova frame and I use it the way that I like to use it. And so I know everyone's got their own methods and they're out there doing what they want to do and what works best for them. So what you'll notice with my frame is that I don't use this bar for my backing fabric. I use what should be what you load the top to, which is the very front bar. I use that for my backing and this becomes a dead bar. Um, and that's just because I float all of my quilts. Um, so it may look a little different from, from your setup. But in any case, whatever you pin your backing to, what I do is bring it up and I kind of look to see where it looks like it's straight from the front. Because you can tell if you're off. Look, if I, if I scooch this over, you can start to see the fabric is, is not looking like it's straight. Now it doesn't, we're not talking about complete even tension. I'm talking about, is it straight here? So if, you, if you're if you off to this side, you could see that fold, right? So that wouldn't be straight, but you find a spot where you're not seeing any shifting or any folds developing. Okay, so 
once you've decided that it's it's fairly straight it's not like going to this side or going to this side you kind of just hold on to it and find your leader and start pinning to it um, it doesn't have to you don't have to start at the zero or whatever just start wherever you are and we'll start this and then we'll see how straight we are in a minute but we do the same thing as we did in the back I'm pinning from the leader side so that the pin is on the leader side and I'm going every five inches that I've marked on my leaders and I'm pinning about a quarter inch down from the top and I'm not stretching it as I work either side you may think this is slow <laughs> and old-fashioned but it's the way that I do it and I know a few others out there that our pinners certainly gives you the most control but you know there are some red snapper folks out there that are very good with them and when I go to a show or like teach a class <laughs> everyone's using red snappers and like uh, I forgot how to use this what do I do with this just kidding it's not that bad okay so i'm going to continue to pin luckily uh this is a narrow piece of fabric so it won't take forever but if you've got a big quilt you know it takes a few minutes um i feel like i'm pretty fast when i pin i mean it may not look like it right now but when i'm really doing it uh I'm not filming I'm pretty fast so okay so I've pinned it um, and now the trick is to continue with your rolling process making sure there's no wrinkles and you're seeing if things look good on both edges and it's looking good to me and then you get to this point when you get to this point you can see what has tighter tension and what has looser tension and to me this left side is looser can you see how that kind of goes down there but this side looks a little bit more even um, and then noticing it doesn't look like it's shifting to one side or another it just looks like this side is looser so here's what I learned from Jamie Wallen um, I'm going to keep rolling this all the way up to the top, smoothing out any problems. Okay, and then I'm gonna switch directions. And now I'm gonna roll back this way. Okay, if you have automatic rolling features good for you <laughs> i don't okay so i'm rolling down this way i'm making sure that i'm not getting any creases everything's nice and even okay so i'm gonna roll all the way Okay, now I'm going to switch directions and I'm going to roll back. Okay, same as we've done before, making sure that we are not putting any folds or tucks in there okay now by the time you've done this about three times can you see uh, let me see if the camera is picking all that up yes 
Can you see that I have uh, more even tension now? The left side, that action of rolling back and forth and back and forth uh, was the biggest revelation I ever had. And I do owe that to Jamie Wallen because um, he's who I learned it from first. So even on a big quilt, if you're having, it can't be huge, but if you notice, okay, one side is sagging or the middle, whatever, trust me, roll back and forth and back and forth. And uh, once you've rolled, like that was what, three, one, two, three, three times, um, this is good to go. Okay, so I'm gonna roll it back and it'll be even more perfect as I start from the top. So that's how I load the backing. I've rolled it back, so the backing is on there, the tension looks really great. My next step would be to add my batting. So I'm gonna put the batting on, but I don't, <laughs> I don't want you to flip out because like I said, th this is gonna be used for samples, and so I'm gonna use some scraps, and it's not gonna be one piece of batting. So I don't really wanna show you. <laughs> But uh, maybe I might. Um, <laughs> but okay, let me see what kind of batting I have and then I'll be right back. Okay, I went through my scraps. I had some wool, I had some 80-20. So um, this is some 80-20 and I, I had a length that was long enough for this width, but it stops right here before the bar. So anyway, I'm gonna do my samples in here and then when I advance, I'll put some more strips in. <laughs> but Let's pretend like this was a full quilt. Um, I would line my batting up to be really uh, close to the edge where I've pinned. And um, then I would um, do a basting stitch with my channel locks on and get a nice straight edge across here. So that's what I'm gonna do next. Okay, so my batting's on. I've also um, attached my side leaders. These are my do-it-yourself side leaders. There's a video for that if you want to do that. Um, or perhaps you use the ready edge or the um, leader grips. That's great as long, uh, as long as you're getting good tension on the sides. Um, so remember I'm on an ANOVA and I have set my stitch length to two for this. That's what I like for basting. And I have my channel locks on. So let's see if I could do all of this one-handed. sort of <laughs> because I'm using my yeah there we go I like to use my left hand to kind of take care of any fullness that might be taking place while I'm doing this stitch and right now you'll notice I have a ruler foot on only because I leave it on all the time okay so now I've got my top on and it's lined up with that basting stitch that I did and I will put um, another line of uh, basting onto the top itself with my channel locks on and then I will baste the sides whatever is in my quilting space um, at the moment so if this were a big quilt or a regular quilt it would be hanging down and uh, so with the batting and I keep that um, off of the floor with a folding system that I use. So I'll show you that sometime. But for today, it was really just about loading the backing with good tension, uh, putting the batting on, getting the side leaders on, and getting the top on. So that is how I do it in a very uh, simplified, condensed way. I hope everyone is doing well, and I will see all of you next time. Bye-bye.